Um, today's lecture will be 6.3, um, the section concerning truth tables for propositions. Yes, we are going to be doing truth tables now. And we're still in Chapter 6, and the over, um, overall theme is propositional logic. So, again, what's a proposition? Statement about reality that either obtains or doesn't obtain. It's either true or false. You know, it's a state of affairs. For example, I'll give you an example of a proposition. Joseph is sitting in this chair lecturing to you right now. It's a proposition about reality. It's either true or false. It happens to be true, okay? So when we do truth tables, we're going to be doing two things in this section. We're going to classify statements and we're going to compare statements. I will walk you through everything. And then we will, um, in another video, I will show you how to do your homework. So let's start here. So I always expect you to do the reading for Hurley before we come here. But for now, let's just say that um, I'm just going to come straight in and tell you how to get to your truth tables. You can do the reading. So the first thing to do is construct a truth table. First step is to determine the number of lines or rows. All right. So what you got to do is you got to figure out how many simple propositions. So let me go back up to section 6.2. And again, this is review. You got to figure out how many propositions. It's the first thing we do. So let's go up here. What's a proposition? It's a state of affairs that either attains, you know, in reality. So here's a proposition. It's called M. What does M stand for? Um, or sorry, yeah. McDonald's makes hamburgers. That's what M stands for. And then it's not the case that McDonald's makes hamburgers that it's not M. So right there, that's, that's a proposition about reality. It's saying, Hey, it's not the case that McDonald's makes hamburgers. Here's another proposition about reality, right? Not S what's S Starbucks makes hamburgers. Not S it's not the case that they make hamburgers. So right here, you have one proposition. Now, why am I bringing you up here? So a proposition is symbolized by one letter, one capital letter. That means you have one proposition. What about here? How many propositions do I have? two f and m two different letters right two different propositions what's f ferrari makes sports cars what's m maserati makes sports cars so ferrari makes sports cars is a proposition it's a state of affairs that either obtains in reality or doesn't obtain it's either true or false turns out that it's true those state of affairs that proposition about you know reality about ferrari it's true and maserati so both of these are true so anyways Two propositions. Why? Because there's two letters. How many propositions here? How many different letters? N and M? There's two, right? So that's just an example of what propositions look like, right? You're going to have some English that's going to talk to you about reality. Like, what are we talking about? Starbucks, hamburgers, you know, Joseph lecturing in a chair, Ferraris. It could be about anything. And what you do is, when you come down here and you look at this so it's not so abstract and you say, hey, how many number of simple propositions? How many letters? Each letter represents something about reality, right? So when we have two, we have four lines on a truth table. When we have one proposition, like remember that one about Starbucks, we like not S? It had one letter, right? So it has two lines on the truth table. So in this section, 34 line truth table, 64, these are mind boggling. I mean, you've got to be like Yoda using the force to get through this with the human brain. We're not going to do any of these. We're going to simply stick with two, four, eight, and I'll do one on the next homework video with you. It's a 16 line truth table. So what do we do? Don't worry about this. If, if you like an equation like this, it just says it's a calculation that determines how many lines in the truth table. But all you got to do is just memorize this. Literally, how many propositions? We're only going to be using it for max. And you know you'll have 16 lines on a truth table max. So what do we do? How many propositions are here? How many different letters? A and B. Now, you, some of you might have thought we have three propositions, right? Because we have one, two, three. No, I said how many different propositions we have, an A and a B. The B gets repeated, but it's still one letter here. So you have an A and a B. Two propositions, how many lines in your truth table? Bingo, four, right? So what are we going to do here? 
and I'll repeat this by repetition, or I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll figuratively kill you by repetition. Anytime you come to this uh, homework in this section, you're going to be doing three things. You're going to count the propositions. You're going to figure out how many lines in the truth table there are. Then you're going to figure out what's the main operator of this statement. All right, so watch. I'll show you. Right here. This is a statement about reality. It's symbolized for us, right? Whatever this is, we don't know, right? It's, it's, who knows what they're talking about? But we have one, two propositions, which means four lines on the truth table. And all he's saying is since we have two propositions, an A and a B, we're going to have different possible truth values. So he's going to say whenever you have two propositions, the first proposition, no matter what it is, if it's an A or a B or an X or a Y or a P or a Q, doesn't matter what letter it is, it just matters the first one. The truth values are gonna you're gonna give it are a true and a true and a false and a false. So true, true, false, false. On the second one, you're gonna true, false, true, false. Okay? Then he's gonna say that statement that you have. Why is it a statement? Because it has multiple propositions. We have at least two, so it's going to have different, you know, operators going on here. It's a statement about reality divided up by different propositions and the logical operators that it has in between them. So what we're inevitably, inevitably going to be doing is solving statement, right? Which consists of two propositions, which has one, two, three logical operators, right? So what do we do here? What is the main operator of this? This Again, this is re review from 6.2. What's the main operator here? What's the last thing we do? Yeah, this guy, right? It's the main operator. So what we'll do is we'll solve for this, and we'll get all possible truth values for this statement, and then we're going to classify the statement, and I'll show you. So what he does is he says, look, whatever your B is, right here so i'm oh, sorry let me let me just back up so the first thing we do we got our possible truth values then we just simply plug them in over here what was my a well my a so true true false false what's my b true false true false what's my b true false true false right then you solve so my b was a true false true false right well i have to take the opposite of it for this tilde so if i have a True, it's going to be false. If I have a false, it's going to be true. That's what he does here. He's just showing you right under the tilde. He's saying, I'm taking the opposite of whatever B was. Could he have put down the A's and B's? Yeah, he just doesn't do it. He expects you to just, you know, in your mind do it. When I show you your homework, I'm going to, I'm going to give you all possible. I'm going to exhaust everything for you. So it'll be easier when I show you how to do your homework in the next video, okay? So then he eventually solves for the wedge. If I have a true and I have a false, it is uh, to solve for the wedge, at least one side has to be true. Well, one side's true, so therefore the whole thing's true. Why? Because the A is true, right? So I'm solving for the wedge. Then I come down, and once I got my wedge and I have my B, I'm going to solve for the horseshoe. So the bottom line with this is three things you got to do. How many propositions? Two. How many lines in the truth table? Four. Where am I? What's the main operator? The horseshoe. Solve for it get my values okay once i do that later on we're going to see when you classify a statement you got your values hey look are they all true are they all false or is at least one true and at least one false let's go back up i don't know are they all true no are they all false no is at least one true and at least one false yes so it turns out this is Wait for it. Contingent. That's it. That's your answer. So the easy part is these. You know, you're giving a statement a label. It's either tautologous. It just means they're all true. It's either self-contradictory. They're all false. Or at least one true, one false. They're contingent, right? That's the easy part. You give it a label. The hard part is doing the work. In other words, the hard part is coming to this and saying, hey, I got two propositions, four lines on the truth table. I got a main operator here. I got to solve this bad boy and I got to get the key information in order to classify the statement. I got to get these values. Okay. Here's another one. How many different propositions are there? Because this is a statement, right? This is one statement. 
multiple propositions. How many propositions are there? Three. One, two, three. C, D, and E. So he says, look, C, D, and E, here they are. He's going to give you all the possible truth values below. He's going to say, now solve it. What's the main operator? Horseshoe. It's not the tilde. It's not this, because you do these first. You get the values inside the parentheses. Then you solve for the horseshoe. Again, if you're confused on how to solve for these uh, logical operators, go back to 6.2. That entire section was doing nothing but this. Okay? So he says, when you have three propositions, you're going to start with your first one, four trues, four falses. Second one, true, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. Last one, your third proposition, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Instead of asking yourself, why are these the way they are, just memorize them. But in, if you want an answer, have you ever seen a bank robbing movie where um, the person says, oh, there's three possible um, you know, numbers on the safe. So how many possible combinations are there? Right here. These are all the possible combinations. If you were to rob a safe that had three numbers, right? Or about like a hacker. You're in a movie and somebody's trying to hack into a, a website and it's got like a 16 number, you know, passcode. It's mind boggling. Then all of a sudden you have 16 different, and then you have like how many, you know, lines what they're doing is exhausting all possible combinations to hacking into an account or, you know, getting a, a combination to a save. Similarly, in logic, we're saying how many possible truth values are there? Well, they're all here. And then they're trying to say, hey, let's scatter them through this whole statement all the way down and let's solve. And when we do that, these are all possible truth values for this logical operator for this statement. Okay. Now, once we solve it again, this is all the hard work. Then we take what we have in our um, rectangle. And why, why is this area rectangle? Like, why not this? Because this is the main operator, the horseshoe. Are all these true? No. Are all of them false? No. Is at least one true, one false? Yes. So what's the answer? If you were to classify this statement, you go down and you say, oh, contingent. What if they were all true. Sorry. What if they were all true? Well, then it would be tautologist, right? All true. What if they were all false? Be self-contradictory. So for your homework, it's simple. You you do them. You, you know, you work out the truth values and you get your um, values and then you just come here and give me the answer. Now we're going to move into the next section when we compare statements. You have one statement. You compare it to another statement. Long story short, same thing. First statement. How many propositions do I have? Two. I have a G and an H. How many lines on the truth table? Four. What's the main operator? It's the horseshoe. It's not anything in here because this is in brackets. You do this first, then you compare that value to this and then or to the H, and then you get this, the horseshoe, right? What about over here? How many propositions? Two. G and an H. How many lines on the truth table? Four. What's the main operator? Triple bar. Why? Because I have to solve what's in parentheses first, this parentheses, and I get my triple bar. Got it. So I do all the work. Then again, my truth values, the first proposition here, true, true, false, false. The H, true, false, true, false. Whatever I get here from my G, I just plug it in over there for that G. Whatever I got from my H, plug it in over here. Okay? Then I get the information here, and I compare it to this one. So this one is a true so think of this as line one, line two, line three, line four, right? And when I do the second video of the homework, I'm going to show you this. So I compare this to this. So I have a true and a false, true and a false, true and a false, line four, true and a false. So then I say, hey, do I have the same truth value on each line? No. Do I have opposite truth value on each line? Yes. So it's contradictory. So your answer there is contradictory. How do I know that? I have a different truth value on each line. True, false, true, false, true, false. Nothing lines up. So this whole thing is contradictory. You're comparing two statements. Okay? So the first section of your homework, you're classifying a statement, just one statement. The second section, you're comparing statements. I have one statement, two statements. I compare them. And I'm, here's, here's how I do it. You're either going to be one of these two. You're either going to be logically equivalent or contradictory, or you're either going to be consistent or inconsistent. That's your homework answer. So 
Let's do it. I have two statements. One, two. How many lines are, sorry, how many propositions? Two. K and an L. How many lines in the truth table? Four. Whatever my first proposition is, true, true, false, false. Whatever my second one is, and by the way, it doesn't matter if it's an A or a B, Q or an S, it just happens to be K and an L. First letter, true, true, false, false. Second letter, true, false, true, false. I solve. Got my information, right? My truth values. And then second, second statement. I have um, same thing. Four lines on the truth table, two propositions. I solve. I get this. Now I compare. True and a true. False and a false. True and a true. True and a true. Whenever I have the same line on uh, same truth value on each line is logically equivalent. So what was it? Logically equivalent. It's my answer. Just comparing two statements. And we'll find out contradictory. That just means every single time I compare, they're the opposite. True, false. Second line, false, true. Third line, true, false. Fourth line, true, false. Okay? What about consistent? So consistent, there's at least one line in which both true values are both true. What about inconsistent? There is no line in which the truth values are both true. So again, just you solve your statements and then you just, you, you, you figure out, okay, what answer is it? Hurley's going to say it's either this or this. And if it's not one of these two, it will either be one of these two. So consistent. There's at least one line uh, that both uh, truth values are both true. I have a true and a true. I have a true and a false, true and a false, a false and a false, but I have at least one line in which they're both true. Therefore, the whole thing is consistent. Okay? What about this one? I got my, he solved, you know, he solved. And then um, do I have at least, do I have at least um, one line on with which both, no, sorry, there's no line in which the truth values are both true. So I have, there's no line in here in which they're both true. So the whole thing's inconsistent. And what Hurley is saying in this highlighted paragraph, if you want to read this, he's basically saying, look, when you come to your homework, it's either going to be these two or it's going to be those two. And so the first part of your homework, and we'll go over this in my second video, we're going to classify the statement. In the second part of your homework, we're going to compare the statements. And in the third part of your homework, we're going to translate the English into a statement, and then we're going to, you know, compare or um, classify. Okay, so that's it. If you have any questions, just um, let me know, and I will see you in the next video.